Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I'll be looking at and comparing floating hydrometers. This will include the tilt, the float and the eye spindle. Because this is a video involving products and my opinion, here is my full disclosure declaration. Feel free to pause the video now to read it in full, but in short I do not take sponsors and I am totally independent. Let's move on. Let us begin by looking at the pros and cons of actually using any of these in the first place. Firstly, I have to say that I am very keen on these gadgets. They offer me a very convenient way to keep a track of my fermentations. Part of this convenience is that there is simply no need for gravity samples during the process, and if there is a problem then I can see it quickly, and if needed find a solution. It should be understood that these are not going to be super precise instruments, and some are a little bit more accurate in my experience than others. More on this later. During high fermentation you will not be getting much accuracy at all, because the yeast is very active and will move the floating hydrometer around. This effect will vary between different strains. Some yeast will also coat areas of the devices, and if there is more than a certain amount of this on the device then this could be weighted down more in one direction, which will of course skew its reading. After lots of continuous use over years of these types of products I've come to some pretty accurate readings, and everything down to what I would class as totally inaccurate too. Much of this will depend on the conditions inside of your fermenter of course. What they do provide though is a fair guide as to how things are progressing. You will see the gravity score moving down and later on you will see that it becomes stable. With this functionality alone you are given what you need in terms of knowing your fermentation is in progression and also that it has a stable final gravity. If you are looking for something super super accurate though then these floating hydrometers are simply not going to reliably give you that at all. In fact such devices do exist but they are super silly expensive and I would imagine not going to be realistic for any home brewer. Let's now look at these separately for some background and thoughts before doing a direct comparison. First up here is the tilt. I started off with the version 1 and had various problems with it which I reported to the manufacturer. Very quickly and without me actually asking for a replacement I was sent a version 2, and that cured the issues I was having which were mainly poor battery life related. The tilt uses a lithium CR123A battery and despite these not being exactly cheap, I find that they last for up to one year of my constant use, so frankly I am actually happy. The tilt measures temperature and specific gravity and beams this information via Bluetooth to the smart app. If you are using a stainless steel fermenter then it is good to have an old compatible device close to the fermenter for uninterrupted measuring. I use an old iPod Touch personally and this is simply plugged in all the time, but maybe you have an old phone or tablet that is not in use otherwise. A key part to the main plus of the tilt is simply how good the smartphone app is, or at least that was the case until Brewfather started rolling out support for other devices at least. The tilt is included in this support though, so that's nice. You can also set up the device so that it sends its data every 15 minutes to Google Sheets, making it then checkable via Wi-Fi, which is very handy. I recalibrate my tilt before using it for every new fermentation. This I believe is very key to all of these devices really. Next up we have the eye spindle. The eye spindle is described on its website as a DIY electronic hydrometer. It can be bought in kit form for around 30 euros or 30 US dollars. To put one together you will need some electronics and computer skills. Some are reselling these ready to go for a fee on top also. There is actually a nice guy on my YouTube channel's Facebook group who offers these and this is where I obtained mine. I found the setup to be pretty straightforward and not exactly time consuming. Calibrating this took a bit more time but it wasn't too bad at all really. There is an eye spindle website that has documentation in German, English, Dutch and Portuguese. Though the last three languages are offered as a work in progress unlike the German. This information will be key if you're going the DIY route. Looking at the logs, there was a lot of firmware updates between 2016 to 2019, with the last one being in November 2019. 
The default software is very basic stuff, but support is also offered in Brewfather which makes it much more pleasing to look at with the plotted graphs offered. There is a capital difference between the Till and the iSpindle though, and that is that it is not communicating by Bluetooth, but actually by Wi-Fi. I have a mesh Wi-Fi network in my house with good coverage so this did not present a problem for me, just be sure that the area you have for fermentation has reasonable Wi-Fi signal and all will be good. Where I did hit a problem was when I used it with the much thicker stainless steel products like Kegland's Kegmenta. Despite my router being within a couple of meters distance, no signal was found. This is a shame because I use this very regularly, though I suspect that this could be resolved with a Wi-Fi extender that is placed on the top lid, like I need to do with the tilt for the Bluetooth signal to be picked up. No such issues were found with thinner stainless steel products though, including the dual-walled Grainfather Conical Fermenter. Let's now move on to the float. The float is offered by a company called Brewbrain who are based in the Netherlands, and this is the latest design of these three floating hydrometers. At this current point it is available in certain countries in Europe and the Nordics, but this could be different now depending on when you are watching this video of course. This company at one point was supplying ice spindle units but wanted to take matters further, so being a team of engineers they developed their own product based around the technology. The end result to start with is a higher quality product, which is evident the moment you pick it up. There is also a great supporting website that offers very good data as well as data storage for your various fermentations within your own private account. You can choose to share your data or keep it private. Support within brewing software like the Grainfather platform and Brewfather is also on its way. As you will note from the circuit board and its container compared to the ice spindle there is much that has changed for the better. What I really appreciate though is how good this website is, so let's have a look at that now. Here is an example of a public shared fermentation. Personally I really like the uncluttered graphs with separate ones offered for temperature, gravity and battery life. All important stuff. You will also note that there is the facility to show this data in various different time formats as well. Another very useful feature is that you can add notes that are dated and timed throughout the fermentation as well as save the data as a CSV file, as well as see it in raw form. The way this is all presented is very easy to read and thus react to should you ever need to. Clearly much experience and thought has gone into this side of the product and yet more is also being added soon. Like the ice spindle, the float communicates via Wi-Fi and once again this presented a problem for readings without extra equipment for the Kegland Kegmenta, but not for anything else including the dual skin Grainfather Conical Fermenter. So in the end this is the evolved version of the ice spindle, which is not a bad thing at all. So let's now look at how these compare to each other by looking at some key considerations. The first consideration I feel is the warranty side. This is going to vary depending on where you buy these items. But because you cannot buy an assembled ice spindle from a store, this will naturally vary even more greatly, and should really be part of your consideration. Next up we have accuracy. Do keep in mind what I said at the start of this video about expectations, but these products do have areas that can have an effect on this further. Let's take a closer look. Certainly for the busiest part of the fermentation is the top lids of these floating hydrometers that will have the most contact with yeast. The danger here is when this lid and top area become coated with yeast, that then dries and starts weighing the floating hydrometer down. Naturally once this occurs then a device will be potentially inaccurate until it is cleaned again. The tilt, perhaps due to its much smaller size, is for sure the most affected by this. The largest of these three, the float, in my testing proved to be the least affected. You will also note that the lids on the ice spindle and float stick up above the liquid level much more. So generally I noticed this meant that whilst the tilt would have coatings on the very top and side, the spy spindle and float tended to be less coated in general. Build quality is also a key area and both the float and tilt have this better cover compared to the ice spindle in general, as you might expect, seeing as the ice spindle is more of a hobbyist product rather than a full on commercial entry, though naturally both the tilt and float are sold at a higher cost, so weigh this one up in your own mind for yourself, but this should naturally be part of the equation not the full equation, or at least to my mind. The reporting experience side of these products is also an area that is very important to me. 
I enjoy comparing fermentations later on and generally find the data interesting and useful for understanding different types of yeast. However, if you are someone who, for example, just plans to use Brewfava for readings at the start and end, then essentially once the float has support, then these will all be on an even playing field. But perhaps you, like I, appreciate the float's UI and the extra features offered. So if this is the case, then the float has a plus from you here. One area that is certainly not even is the battery side. Firstly comes the part of opening the devices themselves. Here is how easy it is to unscrew the float and then the eye spindle. It is fair to say that the caps on both of these are very easy to remove, even if you close them very tightly. There is simply no stress or problems with either of these in terms of removing the batteries. With the tilt, however, you're going to need gloves and patience, and then some more patience. I guess we have all seen angry forum posts about this. You might get lucky and the caps will take mercy on you, but frankly, like most of us, they do get more grumpy with age. Both the eye spindle and float use rechargeable batteries, 18650s to be precise, which you may or may not have already, along with a suitable charger. Whereas the Tilt uses CR123A batteries, but thankfully you do not need to open any of these devices very often. In terms of monitoring battery levels with both the eye spindle and float, the battery level can be precisely monitored via software. These readings are constant as long as they are switched on, so you know when you need to recharge. The Tilt, however, has an LED light system that activates when it is not sitting perfectly flat that tells you how much charge is left. Essentially, if you see a green LED, then all is good. If you see a blue LED, then you have about one month of battery charge left. If you see neither, then you have about two weeks and it is probably sensible to replace the battery. Within this comparison, I have provided what I hope is complete information relating to each of these hydrometers. I have completed a great deal of testing with each of these, so if you have any questions further, then please feel free to ask questions within the comments section. What I cannot do is tell you which one you should buy, or if you should buy one at all in fact. What I hope you can do though is use the information supplied in this video to work out what will be best for you based on your own needs and situation. This YouTube channel has its own Facebook group and full details to find us are now shown on screen. We have a fun, friendly membership of brewers of all experience levels and there are always debates going on that suit people of various levels. The group is rapidly expanding and there is always room for people that can be mature and friendly. This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions, then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate, then please like this video on YouTube, and if you've not done so already, then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing!